we'll be focusing today about a very very important topic of congenital hypothyroidism which is the most common form of neonatal endocrine disorder congenital hypothyroidism has the most profound impact it is definitely the most treatable and preventable form of mental retardation of 22 year old lady who actually presented to us with severe developmental delay and pathological short stature if you can see so compromised in that perspective the height was only 112 cm and had all the features of uh, hypothyroidism which could have been picked up right at birth and maybe later on but unfortunately presented so late which really highlights the importance of what we are talking today how congenital hypothyroidism can have one of the most important impact and that can have a huge uh, factors in that perspective so you all can go and have a look at our website learning.brosociety.in explore different courses which are available up there have a look at our modules and we regularly have three grand rounds related to the pg grand round post graduate uh, lectures and the endocrine grand round and our books and mobile applications are also available there most common clinical feature in somebody who come who has congenital hypothyroidism in the first week of life okay what else <clears throat> navin Manoj. First, if it is serial, then it should be not eighty-five cent. Viba. So, what is the most common clinical presentation of a congenital hypothyroidism at birth? Old, old baby. Sign. Nothing. Else. No presentation. That is the whole message that you will have no clinical picture. these all are rare phenomena and they will develop over time so don't rely on any clinical parameter so that's very very clear so we know that thyroid effects everywhere the bone bone is alpha 1 and not beta brain again alpha 1 and beta is mainly for the pituitary suppression along with that you have the heart where again you have alpha so if your alpha becomes more you will have tachycardia which will happen then you have got the thermogenesis again regulated there liver where beta becomes important so liver is one place where you will have a variation which is happening and of course the gut motility so different organs will be affected and therefore there are features which everybody talks about the features you will have muscle myopathy is high cpk all those features are there so pointers as discussed you say hypothermia prolonged jaundice bradycardia you have got core skin umbilical hernia and you got edema but the most common presentation of congenital hypothyroidism is no sign so that's why you need to do a neonatal screening and you can't wait what is the age after which there is a fall in iq which is started in congenital hypothyroidism viva so fall in iq after if it get after weeks sign so we can wait up to 3 weeks so less than 2 weeks versus more than 4 weeks 15 points iq difference is there so if you treat before 2 weeks and if you treat after 4 weeks 15 to 17 points is different so less than 2 weeks is ideal but definitely not beyond 3 to 4 weeks after 4 weeks you are gone so 2 weeks is the best time but 3 weeks if it's marginal you can of course be better off in that regards so why do we screen we need a disorder which is common which has got a impact which is gives us time and there's a diagnostic test so congenital hypothyroidism meets everything the overall if you look at it's 1 in 1500 in terms of prevalence what is the prevalence if you just go by clinical detection pratik suppose we look at previous reports what was the prevalence of congenital hypothyroidism so it was like 1 in 7000 6000 so lot of these cases were missed in that regards there is severe mental retardation you have got time till 14 days and you can use a tsh which is a good assay in that regard so there are three strategies which people talk about t4 first tsh first and tbg and i have said already that tsh is the best most people use that but let's compare t4 first is basically you do t4 and then you back up do a tsh if the t4 is on the lower side the highest sensitivity is for the tsh the highest sensitivity however for central hypothyroidism will be for t4 and tbg because tbg is basically giving you one more picture but imagine we are not even doing tsh doing tsh t4 tbg will cost a huge amount of money in that regards 
but you will miss subclinical form if you are doing a T4 strategy. In that regards, the false positive rate. Now, this is important. How many people do you call and how many of them turn out to be a congenital hypothyroidism? So for TSH first, it's 0.2%. Roughly, if you call two people, one will have a problem. While if you have a T4 first, it is basically a five times. So five is to one. So what it basically tells us is that there will be four children who will be normal and one will be affected. So the sensitivity therefore is much lower for the T4 strategy as compared to the TSH first strategy in that regards. Now, what are the possible false negative readings? What can cause false negative, Manoj? False negative, TSH or T4? Let's say with TSH T4. So with T4, you will have milder cases you will miss. Central, you will miss with TSH. And what else? If you do the test later on. Hmm. Suppose you do the test at day 3 and you do test in day 9. Should we use the same TSH cutoffs? No. This is very important. But people often use the same cutoff. And then you can falsely do that. Any other condition in which you found that a baby had a normal thyroid at birth, but later on, the TSH really went up. Normal at birth. Normal at day three, and then suddenly it went off, not premature, not on dopamine, not on amiodarone, not on iodine. Which? Antibody. Antibody, the levels will go up right at birth itself. No? Which, which uh, part of natal history will give you the clue? Twin. So if you have a twin of what type? Monochorionic. So if you have same gender twin, then you can have a false negative, which will happen in that perspective. So monochorionic twin can cause that. What about illness? Of course, if you have illness, dopamine, iodine, all that we discussed, transient causes. False positive, Vibha, when will be the test be there? Okay, there is no hypothyroidism, yet it is positive. Like, sir, illness, hmm. illness, it will be positive or negative? So, TSH will come down. So you will miss on that. So false positive will be? Naveen? So if you are doing a T4 test, of course, you will have a high false positivity. As I said, 4 out of 5 are anyway positive. If you do the test early, so if you do it late, you will miss it. If you do early, you will over-diagnose them. So you need to have a TSH cutoff, which is day specific. And if you use a lower cutoff. Now, why do you think that the prevalence of congenital hypothyroidism has gone up from 1 in 4,000 to 1 in 2,000? Uh, has it really gone up? Truly, it has gone up or what is the cause? For screening, has been so even with screening? Like with Western countries also, the prevalence has really gone up. Naveen? The TSH cutoffs have lowered down. So people used to say 40, 50. Now many people at 20 also are starting to worry. Plus a repeat screening. So many people get a repeat screening at two to four weeks. That is going to pick up more cases. But most of those cases are usually non-severe. Most of them are non-severe and they are more likely to be transient. What is the prevalence of transient congenital hypothyroidism sign generally? So if you have 100 children who are diagnosed as congenital hypothyroidism, how many are transient? So transient will be less than 10%. Like Pratik? So now 30%. 30% are actually transient. Because you are picking up those mild cases, which are not really quote-unquote hypothyroid. So if you have a gland in C2, if you find a gland in C2, then the chances are that it is more likely to be reversible form. So what is happening with a lower cutoff? You are picking up many children who have got milder defects at an early stage, which may not need for the lifelong. This is important in that regards. So timing ideally should be day three, at least 48 hours and beyond. Some people use cord blood, which is also there, but better would be to day three. If you're using an earlier cutoff, you need to use earlier sample, you need to do a higher TSH cutoff in that regards. And we'll talk about what that earlier cutoff means. So generally, 
as i discuss first week more than 20 second week more than 10 third week onwards more than 6 you start getting worried if it's more than 40 20 and 10 you consider treatment now whenever you say consider treatment you have to do a venous tsh very importantly before you do a treatment and you do a venous ft first what is the correlation dr manoj between venous and blood tsh how do you convert the values which is more which is less which do you think will be more venous yes. yes how much double roughly because half is blood let's say but if you have polycythemia what will happen in polycythemia you will have falsely low level so this is very important you need to know whether the report which is being done is on venous or on blood and whether sometimes the lab automatically corrects so they will say this is done in the whole blood but it's corrected for the venous so you need to know that otherwise the venous is double the plasma generally and a lot of people get confused that this is this was earlier it was 40 now it is 80 what does it mean it's because it was earlier on blood and now it is on the venous level and that will be the big difference that you have to consider on that regards but now 6 is considered as a figure after which you start thinking that there is something wrong now whether you treat or not is a different matter altogether so now if this is a very simplified approach and we'll discuss about more strategies in terms of screening from both dr pratik and dr sain do a tsh level serum is double the blood level so you do a whole blood when you do a uh, basically a guthrie's card do a whole blood now if tsh is more than 40 do a ft4 no don't read just based on simple value because there may be error and as i said 50% may anyway be uh, false positive so you do a ft4 if ft4 is low start treatment if your tsh is less than 20 and if somebody is taking within the first 48 hours 24 to 44 the ispe which uh, dr sain will talk about uses a figure of 34 in that regards and then if it's less than 20 or less than 34 in the 24 to 48 hour range fine nothing to worry if it's 20 to 40 repeat tsh after 14 days if it's more than 20 do a ft4 in consider treatment if it's less than 10 no treatment is required now again you are in that marginal range 10 to 20 repeat after day 3 3 uh, weeks and if it's more than 20 no confusion treat if it's 6 to 20 then this is an issue less than 6 no treatment 6 is a cut off anyway now 6 to 20 ideally you should look at ft4 if your ft4 is low this becomes central then you have to start considering other factors and if your ft4 is normal do a thyroid scan you may have a milder abnormality like a hemiagenesis which may cause that which condition can cause uh, isolated hyperthyroidopenemia and will cause other problems later on in other hormonal metabolism i had asked this question earlier so navin you can tell me which hormonal condition will be causing this picture of this subclinical quote unquote isolated hyperthyroidopenemia in newborn period and later on has some other endocrine manifestation yes. pseudo hypoparathyroidism so you have to be aware about that if your ft4 is normal and your tsh is slightly high it may actually be php and php may be detected at newborn screening and that's an important thing so this is the overall approach now when should you rescreen so specifically if there is prematurity if somebody is ill somebody has received dopamine somebody has received iodine somebody has uh, other issues hospitalization or twin to twin transfusion same gender twins you have to consider this and that becomes important in that perspective now how do you interpret as i said always do a ft4 when you have a tsh now if your tsh is high and ft4 is low no confusion treat if tsh is high and ft4 is normal if it's more than 20 after a week or two i will be definitely worried and i'll start treatment if tsh is normal and ft4 is low this is a debatable condition this could be central hypothyroidism but if the child is sick doesn't have any other stigmata of central hypothyroidism no micropenis cleft palate cleft lip hypoglycemia then you do a ft4 by equilibrium dialysis and then decide